Welcome to the Bitcoin Basics Podcast, member of the Better Human Podcast Network. We are focused on helping you understand how revolutionary Bitcoin really is. The show covers the fundamental concepts of money, history, economics, and human nature, as well as interviews with non-Bitcoiners so you can understand Bitcoin from first principles. I'm your host, Colin Stuckert of the Better Human Company, and I believe Bitcoin is the ultimate Trojan horse for freedom that is going to bring financial sovereignty to 8 billion humans. As a freedom advocate, I believe Bitcoin is our best chance at a better future, so I'm doing my part to help us get there. Get all the updates over at Colin.coach, as well as the Bitcoin Basics newsletter over at BitcoinWillSaveUs.com. This is a quote I saw today that I wanted to talk about to open your eyes to the reality that Bitcoin is actually the most important thing for freedom and sovereignty and human flourishing that I've ever seen in my lifetime. Now, a manifestation of freedom, individual liberty and optimism, immune to interference from forces that pursue a stagnant, unchanging society. Two, the future. Now, somebody came up with this. I thought it was really cool. And I'm just swiping it. And I'm going to talk to you about it. I want you to think about this from the simplest way possible. Most governments control their people through capital controls and through controlling the currency. This has been going on for you know 100 plus years when modern industrialized city states and nations figured out that like they should control the money because that infers to them a bunch of benefits and it basically helps them control the population a lot of governments you know depending on whether they're more totalitarian more communist whatever they use capital controls and currency controls to keep their people basically slaves right if you look in a place like cuba you're not really getting ahead in cuba and the government makes that so but you got to buy things from the government you got to exchange currencies, pesos to dollars and things like that. And every time you do that, the government takes a cut. It's how they can fund their tyranny. The U.S. government and the Fed, private bank, the most powerful institution on the planet because they print the world's reserve currency. Just think about this a second. The U.S. dollar is not backed by anything. They just print it. Imagine if you could make dollars out of thin air. How powerful of an individual would you be? you would basically have unlimited power. You could just buy the US military basically or create your own with enough money if you just printed it. That is how powerful the US government is. And that is how powerful controlling a currency is. Now, the US government is able to do this and push off its inflation to the rest of the world. It's one way that the US government and Americans and our prosperity actually is built upon the backs of everyone else. Nobody really wants to talk about that or admit that, but that's the reality. Now, Bitcoin is different though. You can't print Bitcoin. There's only going to be 21 million. Even if you own all the Bitcoin, you can't control it. There's all these mechanisms in place. The founder, the creator, Satoshi, the group, whoever it was, understood these things. He understood game theory. He understood the problems with governments. He understood the problem with human nature. And so he created this thing that is now like a virus flourished and is alive. And you can't get rid of it. You can't censor it. You can't kill it. And nobody can control it. Nobody can make more of it. Nobody can stop it. You can't turn Bitcoin off and you can't stop Bitcoin. There's a lot of nuance here. It takes time, but let's just assume that's true. Just like the internet. You can't turn the internet off. If America turns the internet off, well, Russia and China, they're going to turn their internet on. They don't care. You'd have to basically wipe out humanity to turn off the internet. And even then, if uh, you know the power goes out because there's a solar flare or something, you'll have the internet back up pretty quickly. Bitcoin's just like that in that way. That's why it's often called anti-fragile because the more you attack it, the stronger it gets and it's just not going anywhere. It's like a hydra. You cut off one head, a bunch more pop up. These reasons are why Bitcoin is like a Trojan horse for freedom because governments, politicians, the people that don't understand Bitcoin, they're going to see it and they're like, oh, well, you know, funny internet money. It's going to kind of catch them off guard. Then when they really see the use cases for it, when Cuban citizens are using it to bypass the peso and bypass the government's currency controls that the government uses to suck value, to suck, my, to suck monetary energy out of their citizens, when they start seeing that, when the revenues start coming down because Cubans are opting out of that peso network and opting into the Bitcoin network, that's when they're going to start paying attention. That's when they're going to try to come in with guns and do these things. But they're going to fail. Bitcoin is just not something you can control or put back in the box. Assuming that Bitcoin cannot be stopped, cannot be censored, can't make more of it. It's the hardest money ever created, ever found. It is the most exciting technology of our lifetime. Now you get that to people that live in countries where the currencies are hyperinflating, 
where people, as a result, generally can't buy food, uh, clean drinking water. They struggle with power, with electricity. Everything is bad when you're living under tyranny or communism or a place where there is hyperinflation. Look at Venezuela. Lebanon has 100% inflation, really bad there. Sudan has like 400% inflation. And you can go all around the world to find this. Some countries have less inflation, some have more. But the countries that are hardest hit, that are straight full-blown communism or that have massive inflation, the citizens suffer the most. But Bitcoin is not beholden to inflation because nobody can print it. In fact, Bitcoin tends to appreciate in relation to currencies that deflate. It is the ultimate inflation hedge because it actually benefits the more the government and other governments create more of their fiat phony currencies. You get something like Bitcoin to a poor farmer and he uses that to store his energy and his wealth. So like, let's say he sells a cow and that gets converted to Bitcoin and then he holds that Bitcoin. And now whenever his government or the peso or whatever, wherever he's at is devaluing because they keep making more of it, his Bitcoin is actually rising. And it's very likely just because of where we're at in 2021 with early adoption of Bitcoin and just where it's going, his Bitcoin's actually growing. And it's very likely to grow between 50 to 200%. And then even faster when we hit hyper Bitcoinization uh, in the next three, five, 10 years. So had he kept his financial energy in pesos that was devaluing, it was like melting like an ice cube, he would have been forced to spend that. How do you get ahead if the dollars or the currency is just deflate or how do you get ahead in a country where you have hyperinflation? You don't. It's just one more way that the masses stay oppressed and poor while the elite control. I believe we can change the world from a bottom up approach by bringing Bitcoin to these individual farmers. And as internet adoption around the world, as cell phone adoption, as technology, as apps, as all these things happen that are growing and making it easier to access Bitcoin and transact with Bitcoin, things like the Lightning Network, et cetera, the more we're gonna see a bottom-up approach. That's the only way we're gonna solve the problem of poverty around the planet. Why? Because most of the problems of poverty stem at the government level. Corruption or a few select elite that like to control the masses and like to hold their power and they use currency or they just straight up mismanage their governments and currency, or whatever, or they're always fighting and there's always revolutions. The citizen is always hurt. But if that citizen, if those people that are stuck in these war-torn, tyrannical jurisdictions get access to Bitcoin, they can join the global economy because now they can send and receive payments, which is massive. People don't really realize how important that is. That's why they keep saying, you know, the 2 billion unbanked are such a huge opportunity, but no banks want to serve them. Well, Bitcoin will be the crypto bank that will serve them. And then they get to store their financial energy in something that isn't beholden to the governments. Maybe they can exit. Maybe they can leave. Maybe they have enough Bitcoin eventually to leave the country, go somewhere else. Imagine being stuck in a country where you can't make money. The money you do make is inflating away. So you get a little bit of it and then every single day it's worth less. So then you have to spend it. You don't grow in a place like that. This toxic money is why these places never grow. I mean, toxic money plus corruption, but they kind of go hand in hand. But from the bottom up, by empowering individuals, by giving them access to Bitcoin, by giving them access to the global economy, some kid in Sudan can get on an old laptop with like iMovie and, you know, obviously he's got like internet access or whatever, but he could edit some videos for me and I can pay him and send him Bitcoin. My editor in Greece, my podcast editor, I send him Bitcoin. I pay him every month. He does all the podcast editing. Bitcoin is a Trojan horse. It's going to change the world. It already is changing the world. People have no idea what's in store. Governments have no idea what's in store. And that's why I'm really excited because for too long, governments have just been gobbling up power and using identity politics and fear-mongering propaganda to get more of it. And it's about time we had a change. The Individual Sovereign Thesis, which is a book written called The Sovereign Individual, is going to play out. It already is. And I'm really, really excited because it's going to be more prosperity, more sovereignty, and more freedom for more humans than anything ever that we've ever seen. That's it for today. Follow along Better Human Company over at betterhuman.world to get the updates of how my new company and our new approach to uh, charity, to philanthropy, to humanitarian work in a 50-50 model I'm really excited about it. It's what I'm doing. So you can follow over at betterhuman.world. And then if you want the Bitcoin Basics podcast, 
the newsletter just to get a few shows every week of what releases, check out BitcoinWillSaveUs.com. Thanks for watching.